seat. I arranged all of this for you. Yeah. Get comfortable. Yes. I see you are in your comfiest attire, which is great. I wanted to schedule this session with each other to help you get things back on track, but most importantly to help you feel relaxed as a personal assistant. There's so much more than just marking your calendar and booking your appointments. I want to make sure that your life is moving in the direction you need it to, and not just career-wise, but also your whole um, ecosystem, if you will. Yeah, so I wanted to just check in with this particular session on other areas of your life that we need to carve out time for and put on the calendar, because everything makes up your schedule, not just work. And I've noticed you've been working very hard, and things in life may also be impacting your stress levels, so I'm aware that you are in need of other uh, appointments and self-care habits that are going to make your life feel more intentional and that you are living out each day the best you feel. And my job today is to help you find out what needs to get on the schedule to help with that intention and thoughtfulness. Yeah. Yeah, so first I'm going to make you a cup of tea to help you relax during our session, okay? I have here a selection of some teas. So we have chamomile, vanilla, and honey. And I think some sleepy tea, so let me just go through and see what we got. Okay. Let's see. There's only two selections, really, so let me know. I can go back into the kitchen and grab something else if you don't like any of this, but um, we do have throat comfort. I know you've been doing a lot of presentations and the weather has been a little bit drier, so maybe this will be comforting for you. So there's that option. Also have chamomile, vanilla, and honey. Soothing chamomile with smooth vanilla and honey flavors. Both are caffeine free as well. So you can go to bed without any worry about 
want to go with this one instead? Okay. That is good with me. Whatever helps you feel most relaxed. mug. Did you paint this yourself? I found it in the kitchen. Oh, it's from one of those paint places. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm not here to judge. I thought it was very cute. It looks very well uh, painted for, you know, given Do you enjoy making things like this? They help you relax. That's good. Okay. All right. So, let's open this up. And go ahead and drop. teapot cozy. It's like a little pot holder. Very neat. This was hand sewn. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this for you, okay? There we go. So, as your tea is steeping, I want you to take three deep breaths. Just take a moment to take delight in your tea or your beverage. Just enjoying this time. There's no rush. You have as much time as you need right now. By focusing on the present, you get to even slow down, slow down time a little bit because you're focused on the moment. I know our thoughts can really scatter and keep us occupied so quick, you know, so often, and feel like we're going a million miles per minute. So, as I give you this tea, I hope you get to just enjoy it, sip it. Take those three deep breaths. I feel like we could all use a deep breath, you know? Okay. All right. I'll give you your tea now. All right. Here you go. I want you to be too worried that I brought out my planner. <laughs> I know immediately you must be thinking, what must I do next? What do I plan for? But instead of focusing on your work, I want to focus on your life so we can focus on balancing the work life a little bit better for you, okay? What are personal assistance for, if not to help you balance it all? <laughs> okay. So. 
so. Just open this up. And I have a little notepad. I'll put this over here for now. Yes, I know. I still have my protective sheet. See them get frayed. These stickers are a little bit more protected. <laughs> okay. Go to this month. here I can write down some of the ideas we discuss. So I wanted to just brainstorm a little bit first before we put anything on a schedule, okay? So I just wanted to ask you what you felt was important to you right now or what you're dreaming of doing but haven't really gotten around to doing. Um, or things that have been stressing you out and you feel like you need to address or attend to them in some way. So, I know sometimes that involves non-work stuff. Maybe it's procrastinating on things you need to get to, but just have pushed off due to other things. So, we can encompass all of that, but definitely want to focus on the things that make you get your sparkle. So let's start with things that you feel, um, you know, you've been thinking about but just haven't gone around to but would really like to do in this next month. Okay, spend time with loved ones. I love that. You feel you've neglected time with them a little bit. You want to have, okay, you want to have a self-care day, maybe, okay, a stronger morning and night routine, I can understand that. Uh, going back to the self-care day briefly, um, what do you envision in that self-care? Massage. Mm -hmm. Watching TV. Okay. Yeah, I know you don't really often have time to just sit and really enjoy it. TV. Yeah, kind of like that focused energy on watching something versus having something always on in the background or on the on your phone. Yeah. I know you. Reading? Okay. Being out in nature? I like that. It's a good one. What about um, just other things in your life that, you know, you haven't gotten to do or have been thinking of wanting to do, just haven't had the time? Yoga? Pilates. Oh. Okay. Oh, you feel you've been inconsistent. Okay. Okay. We'll figure that out. Spa day. <laughs> Love that as well. 
That probably ties into the massage you mentioned earlier. Okay, is there anything you feel you've been avoiding that has been causing you stress and you want to address at some point? Okay. Hmm. Oh, it seems very normal to worry and stress about, even if you feel like they're not huge things. Everything kind of can impact us to work on these things, so I get that. Okay, I feel like we have a lot to work with, and some of this, it sounds like you just feel you're inconsistent with keeping up with some of these things, so yeah. Join a workshop. Okay, what kind of workshop? Jewelry making. Okay, that sounds really cool. Any specific kind of jewelry? Silversmith. Okay. And you saw a workshop locally that you wanted to join? Absolutely. I think we are always, um, you know, there's like, there's never an age that we stop learning. You can continue to learn and grow and adapt to new skills. There's never a wrong time to continue to learn something. And I think that's a fabulous idea. Okay. Perfect. So, therefore, I'm going to go back to our schedule. And... The monthly view, this is going to give you a grasp on everything as a whole and allow you to put things where they need to be um, throughout the month rather than trying to grab, you know, uh, cram everything into one week, which can be a little bit overwhelming. You also get to see your other obligations. Um, that might impact your capabilities of doing certain things, like perhaps you have way too many social events, so of course after that you may feel really tired and need to recuperate and spend time away or on your own. I know you're a very, very busy person and you have a lot of other obligations, but I do think it's important to carve out these life events and life um, aspects that are going to nurture you at the end of the day and allow you to give more of yourself and be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Okay. So looking at your month, um, how about we put down some social events that are just for you Right, not any for work or, you know, otherwise, uh, you know, outside of our own appointments. Um, can we put some things on the calendar for this month where you get to spend time with family and friends? Maybe at least once a week, if that feels like too much, maybe every other week. Okay, so this weekend you're a little free, okay. For brunch, okay. And do you want to spend that with family, a friend, a friend, okay. Okay, so that's Saturday. I'm going to make a quick note. Okay, so I have your um, weekend pad here that I'm just going to make a quick note. Um, schedule brunch for myself. I'm going to schedule a reservation, I'm assuming at your favorite cafe. Do you have a specific time you want me to schedule it for? If possible, with your friend. Okay. Perfect. I will double check and get back to you as soon as I can about that. But I will mark it for now. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and put all 
this on the digital calendar as well so it syncs up to your calendar and I can make any adjustments on the fly. Okay. Okay, so brunch with a friend. Do you feel you have any more capacity for social time this weekend or would you like to dedicate it to other things? Okay. You think you could do a Pilates work? Right, you do have a membership, so you just want to get it on the calendar, okay. And we could always book the next few appointments so that they're just there and you don't have to think about it. Okay. Yeah, do you have um, a preference of days already for Pilates? Saturdays, okay. Tuesdays. And Thursday. Okay. No problem. I will see what I can do to get those on your calendar uh, throughout the month, okay? All right. Okay, anything else um, for this weekend we want to go over? Okay. So let's continue with the social events. Um, what about family? You want to do a family dinner the Friday night? Okay. 7 p.m. Okay. And you want to do that in every other week. Okay, so I'll put that down as well for the Friday after. Uh, two weeks from then as well. Okay. And then you'd like to grab dinner with friends that week. Yeah, we can look something up. See if there's anything locally that might interest you. Okay. Let's see. That's quite a bit already. Um, but I would say if you want to squeeze in more, you might as well. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's a good framework. It helps you look forward to these things, times with your friends and family where you can just show up and be yourself um, and enjoy life together. So I think that covers that area nicely. Do you want to choose a self-care day? I do see one of these Saturdays is open. And what would you like to do for that self-care day? Okay. Massage. And a manicure. Okay. Perfect. Love that. Let me just go ahead and make a note for myself. Let's see. You have Pilates three times a week. Um, another weekend, you're also free. You want to keep that pretty open? Okay. Okay. You don't mind doing a weeknight for a workshop? Um, sure. Would you want to do a, a Wednesday night? Okay. So how about the third Wednesday? And I can definitely book that for you. Okay. Make sure to put that on the calendar.
We are really getting through the list here. I love it. Now, I do recall you wanted to also take a yoga meditation class. Um, I think there's like a sound bath meditation one at the local yoga studio. Would you like me to book that one for you? I believe they do, um, I think it's Wednesday or Thursday evenings, usually. Okay, so you want to do Thursday. You want to do this Thursday. Okay, let's do it. Now, we haven't yet touched on the things you are avoiding, but do want to get to at some point. I'm wondering if I can pop those in your calendar just to make sure that we address them and spread it out a little bit. Yeah. So you want to do the first one? It doesn't mean you need to solve the problem right away, but if you can take one step towards getting things moving, that might be the most, you know, helpful thing we can do, right, to get it going. So, for example, you need to call them to arrange for them right to visit. So, making that phone call, for example, is going to be important. Um, I would absolutely do the phone call for you if I could, but I know that that's an important phone call for you to take. So when do you feel like you will feel up to taking that phone call? Right, I think Friday morning would be great. It's a little less crazy on Fridays for you, and you'll have the space to sort of critically think about it. Um, and also in the morning will be great. So I'll just put 10 a.m. I will set a reminder for you, I promise. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. You wanted to work on that side project of yours that you've just been putting off forever and ever. So, when do you feel like you can spend maybe just 30 minutes or an hour, maybe not actually working on it, but just being around it, thinking about it, jotting down some notes before you have to actually work on that thing. Okay. Wednesday evening. Okay. So we'll just block out 30 minutes to an hour for you to just sit with that item and brainstorm even how you want to approach it or just get your more familiar with it again after not having worked on it for a while to kind of see how you want to revisit it. Um, okay. Love that. Okay. Okay, and then you also need to go yeah, you need to go um, make that a priority. So what day do you think you can address that other issue you brought up? You feel like this week's a lot already, I know, yeah. It might even be too much. <laughs> okay, next Wednesday at lunchtime. Okay. Yeah, and again, we can always move things around throughout the week. I'm here to help you navigate that, but we can truly just... Um, keep an eye on things as they come up, all that good stuff. Or if you ever want to bulk things together, we can also attempt that if you're feeling energetically up for it. Okay. I see you have one weekend where we've really kept it 
really empty for you to just chill and not have any set plans. Um, however, I'm a firm believer in booking time for yourself as well. So I think you should spend that Saturday evening that you are free um, watching a TV show that you haven't been able to watch yet or reading a book that you haven't gotten to read yet. Yeah. Consider it a self-care date night. You can have popcorn, you can have hot chocolate, candy, your favorite takeout, whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then you just sit and focus on that fun activity. You can also do a little online shopping if you really need to. <laughs> What have I been interested in? Well, recently, this past weekend, I finally started watching this television show that has been on my list for a little while. I actually keep a notes app list of shows and movies that I want to watch. Um, and one of them is called Maxton Hall, The World Between Us. Um, it's a German show. Fun fact, when I watch international movies or shows, I prefer to watch with English subtitles because I find watching English dubbing or dubbing in, uh, or essentially a voiceover in my language, I can tell the actors are, like, they're, the, what they're speaking is not that language, so it kind of throws me out of the, uh, experience a little bit. So I prefer watching with English subtitles and hearing it in the original language. I know, very weird. But um, that's been a show I started and I find when I'm stressed or when I am going through a lower mental mood, I need things to uplift me and support my mental space. So I try to avoid things that are going to make me feel really sad or really down. So I wanted to specifically choose a romance that was like a little bit more, I don't know, less heavy or sad content. And I feel like Maxton Hall is super cute and it's like an enemies to lovers. And I've been really enjoying it. It's so cute and like oh, it just makes me excited. Um, for romance, and that's just my cup of tea. But, you know, if you get really excited to watch a thriller or a documentary, definitely choose something that you are going to love and feel re-energized by, as long as that's how you're feeling after. Yeah. Heck, you can throw on your reality TV show, you know? I, su I support all genres. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think we really found ways to book your self-care into the calendar, making it almost just as important, um, especially time with others, right? Time with family and friends, I feel often can kind of get pushed to the wayside with work and the upkeep of life. But I think with when you reflect and think about what's truly valuable and if for you that is, like you mentioned, being social and showing up in your community, in your relationships, you want to carve out that time because it requires time. It requires some time and some care. Just as much as we show up to our job, we want to show up to dinners or meals or events with our loved ones and show up as our full selves rather than empty shells. <laughs> yeah. I know you mentioned that you want to create a morning and night routine. Um, so I'm wondering how we might be able to create that for you. Is there a way we can make that more consistent? 
I think there are some things that can make it easier is doing the same thing every day or doing it at the same time. So for example, working out. Uh, if you are doing Pilates three times a week, doing it at the same time on those days to really hone in that habit and it doesn't feel like it's hard to do. Uh, workouts in the morning can be really helpful for some people to just get out of the way and not have to worry about it if the nights can get really busy or occupied. So what's your ideal morning routine? Okay, had, had sleep, yes, that's important. Coffee or tea, walk the dog. Okay. Listen to podcast or book, I love that. Oh, meditate. Okay. For like five minutes, ten minutes. Perfect. I think that's a plenty of time to get what you need for meditation. Okay, and workouts. Okay. Wow. Robust morning. And journaling. Okay. Well, that's quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, let's look at your night routine in its ideal fashion and see if we need to mix anything up. What is your ideal night routine? In bed one hour, four, okay. Skincare, reading, got it. Yeah. And the great thing about morning and night routines is if you feel like you mentioned, you get really tired at night, so you'd rather have less to do. Totally understand that. Um, you can always switch things around and, you know, journal at night if you feel you have the energy. Uh, you could always, um, meditate at night if you didn't get to it in the morning. Stuff like that. Okay. Supplements. You want to keep up with that? Okay. So that's your night routine. All right. Perfect. Okay. So then I think just evaluating how long each thing takes you and seeing if you really have the time each morning to do that is going to be important. Um, so I'll take a look at your calendar and see if we need to adjust anything, but I'll make sure it's synced up to your uh, digital version and you can kind of see each day what you can attempt and see all these items on your to-dos. And you'll probably want to keep at it for a few weeks to see how things go, but if you consistently do it every day, you're more than likely to stick to it. I also think stacking all of these habits together can be helpful because you're sort of dedicating that whole time to doing it, each one, um, and it makes it a little easier to do them when you're doing them all together. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick note. Morning and night. All right, so I think we're good to go on the calendar aspect of helping you maintain that work life balance. And hopefully, you feel a little excited about upcoming things that are going to make you feel good and make you feel better and make you feel productive as well. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna put my pad in here. to um, let you know I picked up the 
these thank you cards for you. Uh, a part of, I believe, with work-life balance is giving in some way, not just your time or your intentions, but again, that thoughtfulness of others in your life. Um, so, I know you've been mentioning you want to write more thank you cards, so I found these for you. And I think people really love written notes from you. And even if it's just a note, you know, you don't always need to be providing something of monetary value. Of course, that's a very welcomed, I'm sure, and thoughtful, but even just a handwritten note or a compliment to someone going out of your way to notice others, be a friend, be a neighbor, is going to go farther and you are going to see that joy within you come up and you will feel energized by it and you will want to continue going out of your way to help others uh, feel good and appreciated yeah I think sometimes we feel we can be bothersome or uh, that, you know, people don't want things from us or, or we don't want to like ourselves, maybe. But I think people appreciate being seen more than we realize, though. Uh, and, of course, seen where they're at and with intention. So, I'll leave these with you. Here you go. Okay. Last but not least, I wanted to share with you some last few self-care items. I know you wanted to get back into reading some poetry. So I have some gifts for you. I have this book here. It's called 101 Famous Poems. It's contemporary. this is interesting. We have Whittier. We have Groove. Um, Longfellow. Kipling. Alice Carey. Frost. Byron. You know, <laughs> contemporary to uh, about a hundred you. And then I have these love poems by Pablo Neruda. And, um, he was born in 1904 and died in 1973. In, he lived in, uh, Chile, began publishing poetry in 1920, and he won a Nobel Prize for Literature, actually. So these are some love poems. They're, um, they are both in Spanish and English versions. So one spread is both languages. And they are romantic for sure. Very fun. There you go. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I thought these reminded me of you and your desire to read more poetry. So, here you go. Let's see. There's there.
you can see I've laid out some face masks for you. I think there's also a foot mask and some eye masks. And I thought you could enjoy one of these for the rest of your evening. And while I also pull a quick oracle card for you just to wrap up our time together. This one's very on point. Chill out. <laughs> Refreshing aloe vera mask. We also have, um, these are some of my favorites. The, uh, Tony Moly, I'm Rice, Clear Skin. just want to let this sit for 10 to 20 minutes, okay? Okay. Alright, well, here you go. I also brought over some Rare Beauty lotion and spray, and it's from the Find Comfort collection. I find it to be very soothing, and I feel like these products really provide that relaxation. You could spray this on you um, or maybe even your pillow if you want. And then the same scent is in the lotion. So. So. It's just like a very calming scent and not too great. calmer and rejuvenated. I think skincare on our body and our faces helps us get back in touch with our body a little bit, just like the act of it, and just promotes, you know, touch and the physical uh, anchor to yourself, even if it's your own self. I think it's truly great. Even that being said, even with your loved ones, uh, depending on your physical comfort level, often just hugging someone for like 20 seconds can really boost your mood and like make you feel present, feel grounded, feel better. So if you need something like that, don't be afraid to ask for a hug because it may make you feel better than you realize. And perhaps not everyone is comfortable asking for that. So, you know, you could always ask if someone needs a hug and if they're willing to hug you. Um, maybe they really needed it and couldn't ask for it, you know. Anyway. So, I'll leave that for you. And I'll also leave the spray. I would just pull one oracle card for you just to set the tone and add a little bit more reflection on where you're at. This is the uh, Work Your Light Oracle Card Deck by Rebecca Campbell. It's a little guidebook. shuffle it a little bit and we'll just pick one card for you. Okay. I feel like 
this one stuck out so interesting mm. so this says trust the niggle <laughs> like that niggle in your head <laughs> what is the niggling feeling trying to tell you it kind of looks like a coven of witches saw the show Agatha all along. Kind of reminds me of that. So, let's see what this card has to say. Is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? That niggling feeling, that annoying feeling, that inconvenient feeling. Try as you might, it's there and it ain't going anywhere. Most people spend years ignoring their feelings, throwing their best dollops of stubbornness, ego, and post-rationalization to numb them out. It's exhausting and until you face the niggle, life just throws you more bait to awaken it to draw your attention to the light within you that is bursting to come out. The nickel is an arrow pointing to what is standing in your way, the relationship, the conversation, the decision, the shift that needs to be made, the stone in your shoe. Often we feel the niggling feeling in our body first. Many people think that intuition is something from the higher realms, but in fact it is the body that is the intuitive one working through our senses to deliver vibrational information. It takes just a moment every day to scan your body to receive the intuitive intelligence and act on it quickly. You are being called to face the nickel now. If you don't face it, the universe will throw something much bigger and more obvious in your path, and then you will likely regret that you didn't answer the nickel in the first place. I know it's scary, but you are safe. Answer the nickel. Well, if you've been having a niggling feeling, this might be speaking to you, right? Especially around the conversation of self-care and work-life balance. I think a lot of time in our culture specifically, we are brought up to focus on things such as ambition, money, fame, expertise. And a lot of that is not bad in and of itself. A lot of it stems from the need or desire from our predecessors to create a safe and comfortable life for us because that security obviously is important. But I think sometimes the idea of being famous or, or creating some kind of legacy through what we sort of deem legacy uh, appropriate. I think can often be sort of muddied and there is so much more to life that I think you tend to only really understand becomes more valuable than all those things when you're faced with situations um, such as loss or grief and your perspective changes, your values start to change, you remember oh wait, like at the end of my life, money and what I did here and what I did there was important but the most important things are my connections my relationships, my ability to work on things that I was truly passionate about, things like that. And it can be obviously, you know, important for us to focus on career or work or building up a fortune or legacy, but if our whole life is that and we still find we're unsatisfied, it might be because we value some other things more 
and want to pay attention to those things more. So maybe that's the niggling feeling of realizing you've acquired so much already and it's still not making you content or purposeful. And by changing the way you approach your life in focusing on the things that you value, I think you're going to see that while your life looks different than others, you feel somewhat more happy because you are focusing on things that you value and only you get to decide what that is. Um, people are going to have their opinions about what makes you happy, but at the end of your life, you get to decide what really did make you happy, right? So, um, yeah. I know that's a little woo-woo there, but whatever that feeling is that's telling you what you need to do, what you need to focus more time on to be more at peace with yourself, I think is worth going after. Okay. All right. That was fun and hopefully not too reflective that you can't enjoy the rest of your tea and your face mask and relaxing for the rest of the evening, okay? Well, I really appreciate the time we got to spend and I could help you carve out some time for yourself and the things you care about. I look forward to our next appointment together. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go and get your calendar sorted out, but I'm sure I'll check in with you tomorrow and we'll go ahead and make sure you get to address everything you need and have time for some life stuff alongside the work, okay? Yeah, I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and clean up here. You just sit